Welcome back to Athletic Everyday, day number 154. Got an inside calisthenics workout today from yours truly's room. I woke up this morning and it was raining pretty hard. And then it promptly stopped as soon as I started doing this workout. But I said I was going to do the workout inside, so I figured I'd do it inside. But it feels good, once again, to get this workout in before my shift at work. I mean, I don't think there will be an option to do it after work today because I finish at quarter past 10. So... Um, I kind of had to get it in and I wanted to get a calisthenics workout in so I did it in my room but this just goes to show that you can get a really good workout in with minimal equipment. Uh, today I was obviously focusing on my main goals again those of you that are new to the channel I am focusing on building up my muscle up form improving my muscle ups so that's why I'm working on these LSIT muscle ups here on the small bar or the short lower bar. I'm working on getting to the point where I can do freestanding handstand push-ups and also just being able to hold a handstand with great competency, you know, walking handstands, things like that. And then also being able to do a full front lever hold for sort of 10 to 15 seconds, as well as being able to do a front lever rows where you can row yourself in that front lever position towards the bar and get your chest or belly to touch the bar. So those are the sort of skills that I'm working towards, you know, quite advanced calisthenic skills. I guess you could also say I want to work on doing a, um, I don't even know what it's called, when you go from the floor into a handstand push-up, so you go from floor to handstand, that would also be really cool. So that's why I was doing the frog stands in between these uh, sets of muscle-ups. I was actually supersetting the low bar muscle-ups, the low bar LSIT muscle-ups with a uh, frog stand uh, on those parallettes, those homemade parallettes that I was using. So I'm a little bit unsure because I haven't done these in a while with these frog stand uh, holds. Are you supposed to try and take your knees off? I think the progression here is to do this into a handstand. I don't actually have the pushing strength to do that right now or the balance or stability. But I'm thinking, it's my thinking that if I can get my knees off my elbows and I can start getting used to pushing in this position, then eventually I will get to the point, you see I'm holding this, I'll eventually get to the point where I can do that into a full handstand. But those are really, really tough. You can also do it on, you know, bare hands on the floor, but I generally tend to find that doing it on the parallettes, where you can keep your wrists in that neutral position, it sort of removes um, pressing into the fingertips as a variable for you to worry about. You can just focus on pushing, just like you're pushing into a barbell. Into the, with the heel of the hand and then you can focus on pushing like that so that was the first superset of the day the muscle ups and the parallettes uh frog stands and then i, I was working on some front lever raises I, it's not actually an option in my room to do straight off front lever raises as you can see for obvious reasons there's not enough room between the door and the wall so this was quite good though i felt like these front lever raises were actually going quite well i was able to do a set of i think three or four on the first set uh, but i got progressive they got progressively harder as i went on uh but I was able to control the negative a lot more, which is quite nice. I found that on the way down, I'm actually getting better and better at slowing it down, especially in the bottom portion of the movement. So sort of when you go past 90, so I'd say 90 degrees in relation to the floor, like when you're perpendicular to the floor with your body and your legs, that would be like the traditional front lever position. But then as I go below that, I usually will... You know, as you go from the top, the muscles have the best line of pull. The lats are strongest in that position. But once you get lower, the, the lats generally tend to, because they're in a more lengthened position, the ideal str uh, length to tension relationship is there. And then as you go past that point, the lats sort of lose control and the legs will just uh, yield to gravity. But I'm actually getting better and better at holding it or lowering even more slowly once I go past that sort of uh, sticking point, when I lose that sticking point in the, in the range of motion. So that's quite good. And that, I guess you could say, is progress on the front lever. Which isn't bad because, you know, I've had, I had a few weeks off of training front lever, so it does feel good to be getting back into it. And then I was supersetting the front lever raises with some handstand holds against the wall, trying to make sure that I hold and maintain that hollow body position. You can see I'm arching my back a little bit here, but um, I've got to get to the position with the handstand where I'm able to feel confident pushing myself off the wall and being able to hold that position. The only thing that's sort of scary about doing them this way, facing towards the wall, is that um, if you fall if you fall backwards basically you're falling um, feet first well you're feeling, you're falling back first against the ground so you have to kind of like be very very careful with how much you push away from the wall because if you push away too hard then you're basically just falling backwards and you can't see where you're falling it's a bit different if you go back against the wall but the trouble with going back against the wall it makes it a lot easier and it makes you how much have a much higher tendency to arch your lower back which is not what you want to it's not a habit that you want to learn when doing handstands if you want to get good at them so that was this superset here so handstand holds i mean i'm not sure exactly if i was i wasn't really timing the holds i mean i think conservatively i was maybe holding these for 15 20 seconds at a time some of them less some of them more uh, but once again trying to focus on shrugging up the shoulders pushing through the fingertips turning my hands in slightly 
and then also holding that hollow body position, just tapping my feet gently away from the wall, but it's very difficult to not push yourself too far away. Then some strength work, I was working on some uh, weighted pull-ups, mainly focus on getting my chin to sort of above the door frame. From this angle, it doesn't look like I'm getting very high, but I'm always trying to hit my chin on the top of the door frame there. I am sort of bringing my chin to it a little bit, but I worked up to a top set of uh, 30 kilos, did two sets of four, and then the last set I went up to six, just doing as many, many reps as possible. And the reason why I'm doing this overhand grip is to make it more specific to building strength in that pulling in that pronated position or palms forwards position, which is very much more specific to doing muscle ups. Now, uh, I'm not sure if this is the strongest I've ever been in this pulling movement pattern. I'm not, I'm not actually 100% certain. I remember in the past, I did 40 kilos for a set of four or five. But that might have been with a supinated grip. And obviously, you're, people generally tend to be a lot stronger in the supinated grip because you can use a lot more biceps. And once you get to the top end range of motion, um, because of the length, te length tension relationship between the muscles and the arms and the forearms, you're actually able to get a better and stronger lockout but it is more difficult to pull in. I think, you know, I, I would say that uh, pulling with a chin-up grip is, is a lot easier. Uh, but let me know what you guys think. Anyway, then I moved on to some straight bar dips, once again, for specificity for the muscle-ups. And I did end up adding load to these. This is the first time I've added load to straight bar dips. I thought that would be really hard, but um, I guess the difficulty in this in this this lift is being able to get low enough on the bar. So I'm always trying to hit the sort of middle part of my chest on the bar, the part of the bar where my chest would come over if I was doing a muscle up and then I'm trying to get my legs as far underneath the bar as possible to replicate what it would be like in that turnover transition phase between the pulling and the pushing of a muscle up. Now, um, only added 10 kilos. I feel like I was able to do quite a lot of reps, but I feel like the range of motion could have been improved a little bit more. But I must say, doing these straight bar dips, I could really feel this in my lower pecs. My lower pecs felt like they were really doing a lot of work and they were contributing a lot to the movement here. And also a little bit in my, uh, well, I felt there's a lot in my abs. You can see my abs working here, really trying to maintain that core stability all throughout the movement. And then on this last set here, I decided to just do as many reps as I could with decent form, trying to get as low as possible, get my feet underneath the bar as far as possible as well. I think I ended up doing a set of eight in total and also adding that little pause in the bottom really helps to replicate uh, getting over the bar and then just pushing from a dead stop rather than using any momentum and trying to swing yourself over. But anyway guys that is pretty much it for today's workout. A little bit different. Um, thank you very much for watching and I will catch you in the next one.